In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top-ranked fitness, entertainment, and health podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way That's we open, right, Bob. but the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. We have fun conversation. We mention studies. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode. By the way, if you want to fast forward to the part you're most interested in and skip the rest, See go, you to, later. go to mindpumppodcast.com. Everything's time stamped. Otherwise, listen from beginning to end. Here's what happened in today's episode. We started by talking about uh, the school subjects. We were all weekend. Yes. Uh, oh, by the way, only one of us got a D in a subject. I'm so, so proud that you admitted something. You'll so. have to listen to yeah. this episode to find out who had the bad grades. Uh, then we talked about a new supplement category that's exploding uh, everywhere, all over people's faces. Uh, listen to that part of the episode <laughs> to hear what that is. Yeah. Then I talked about somebody Exciting. overdosing on eating black licorice. It was not Adam. It was someone else, but it did scare him. Yeah. Then we talked about a show on Stars. Uh, Justin is basically talking about how you can sneak this in with the wife yeah. called Black Sales. Uh, I wasn't real subtle with this one. Then we talked about one of our sponsors, Viore. They make amazing athleisure wear, and they just got neutral... Uh, climate certification. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but besides that, they make amazing clothing for the gym or at home or anywhere. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a huge discount. Here's how you get the discount. Go to vioriclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. And you'll get 25% off your first order. Viore. Then we talk about fast food, our favorite types of fast food. Uh, we talk about another show on Netflix called The Playbook. I mentioned a study showing how THC is being studied to treat COVID. No joke, to treat COVID. That's kind of crazy. Way to go, weed. Then we talked about blue light blocking glasses and how they make us sleep Oh, so good. We work with a company called Felix Gray that makes blue light blocking glasses that don't change the color of everything around you. So they're not orange or red. They're clear, but they're still very effective. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a little bit of a hookup. You get free shipping, uh, free exchanges, and returns. Just go to felixgrayglasses.com, F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y, glasses.com forward slash Mind Pump. Uh, then I talked about a man in England who got in trouble wearing a snake mask. And then we talked about the new South Park episode that offended every single person. I'm so offended. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what we think about controlling a deadlift back to the ground versus dropping it. What are the pros and cons? Next question. How do you tell the difference between being lazy and actually needing to take a day off? The next question. When should you cap off your caffeine intake? And the, fo the final Never. question is following your passion good or or bad advice. Also, this month, we took our two most popular workout programs, MAPS Anabolic, a full-body, muscle-building, metabolism-boosting workout program. It's our most popular workout program. We took that, and we combined it with the No BS Six-Pack Formula, which is an ab-building, core training workout program. Both those programs combine normally around $170 but right now, and only right now, you can get both of them combined. It's a bundle for $59.95. That's $59.95, one-time fee, lifetime access to both programs. Here's how you get access. Go to mapsoctober.com. That's the letter M-A-P-S-October.com. Did you know that there's a C in indicted? <laughs> yeah, it's not it, in, indicted. Yeah, what's what, why is there a C in indicted? I don't know, dude. What is this? It <laughs> makes no silent. sense. Silent. Why? Yeah. Why? Indicted. <laughs> yeah. Adam questions the English language. <laughs> 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 yeah, why is there a C there? I don't know. Well, does I it mean, have like some? They're being tricky because you're indicted. I, there's got to be a reason for it, right? It's got to have some sort of history. From why some, is there a P in pterodactyl? Ooh, pterodon. Yeah. What? Wait, pterodactyl. Yeah, pterodactyl. Right. Yeah, why, why is there a P? Why is there yeah. a C? Don't worry, Doug. We know that the, that we're on. Oh. We know that the high tech isn't working over there. <laughs> <laughs> I like Doug. Doug gets a sign that, that he turns on to show us that we're on air. It's literally the same nightlight I feel as like, my kids have. Uh, yeah, I feel so. like a kid in uh, like a you yeah. know sophomore in high school made it in their class. Ha! Totally. Listen to this. It, ah! com it comes from the Latin word that means to proclaim. We pronounce it to in, uh, pronounce it indict because it originally spelling in English was, or excuse me, we pronounce it in it indi indict because its original spelling in English was e n d i t e. 
a, a spelling a spelling that was used for 300 years before scholars decided to make it look more like its Latin root word. Wow. I'm still confused. And now you know. And yeah. now you know. So, so, so you're saying that that they said, hey, this word's too easy to spell. Yes. Let's, let's make, make it, it difficult. Let's make it worse. That's what they did to everything. Yeah. yeah. Spell phlegm. Phlegm. <laughs> That's a word. Is that really a P? That's, yeah. P-H or something? And with a G. Yeah. Phlegm. Is it really like that? P-H-L-E-G-M. And is there an E at the head, Doug? Mm. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah phlegm. That's dumb. It's, who's it's who's, the, be, who's the best speller, Doug? Doug's the best speller. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel like we're third grade. Well, he's like the last wall of defense before yeah. anything comes I out think of us. Doug's the best speller. Who's then, the worst speller? For sure, me. Are you? Yeah, yes. Probably true. I was I was talking about Texas. Were you insecure about that when you were a kid? That you were a bad speller? You know Is that even a thing? Speller? Uh, yeah, Nobody speller. cares anymore. Right? I think I was I think I was I was well, so bad at so many things that I it just I didn't I think got over insecurities really quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, why be insecure about this one thing? I suck yeah. at many things. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. yeah. You're good at just stuff. out with it already. Yeah. I, you know, I'm trying to remember like um I wasn't that bad. I don't. I wasn't like abnormally bad, like where I was, uh, like you know, failing tests or anything like that. I did well. I told you I was in advanced English. I have no idea why, mm. um, because my 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 teacher always told me that I, I was good at like putting my thoughts down on paper, organizing them grammatically and stuff was not so good. Uh, but uh, she appreciated that, so they put me in advanced English. But then I always the, struggled. The ideas are here. Yeah, yeah. I it's like this. I was put in. I was put in ESL when I was a kid. You guys know that. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Because my parents are immigrants, and I think when I was a kid, I said a word. Because, you know, when you learn two languages as a kid- You, you have a little bit of accent? No, you mix no, them you up. Have, yeah, you mix them. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, so- like, You know, Spanglish. That's where Spanglish yeah, comes from. Yeah, so right. They, right. they heard me say once a word that was in Sicilian. And oh, like, wow. Oh, put you in ESL. Easiest A I ever got in my life. <laughs> 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 yeah. When I was- Dude, when I was Winning. a kid- Winning. You guys have seen my handwriting, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like yeah, a you, doctor's yeah, handwriting. Yeah, you think you're a doctor. It's yeah. in, it's like a if <laughs> it looks like I, I'm writing with my feet. <laughs> it's so bad that at some point I used to get hammered about my handwriting. Just blast every teacher used to hammer me all the time, all I the did time. That on purpose, no, so dude. it made it hard for them to read. It's worse because I tried. I literally sat there and tried, uh, and it was just so bad yeah. that finally in high school uh, a teacher gave up and they said, "This is what you we have do. to type everything." No. Oh, no, that's, no, what, no. that's what they told me. Yeah, because remember, I remember this at that back then. It wasn't like everybody had computers back then. Oh wow, you're old. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah chiseled stone days, dude. Come no, on. bro, it's, my bad. Uh, Justin, you and I are the same. I we know. I mean, you're you're year. older than me, dude. It matters. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> okay. No, the well, Justin was held back like four years. That's so, true. Right? I was. I, <laughs> I was still in grade school. He's a big ass fourth grader. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I remember? Fucking dominated well, no, though. No, no, the teacher literally gave yeah. up and said, uh, "Write uh, every letter in uppercase." So if you ever watch me write, every letter is uppercase because I always think you're yelling at me. Yeah, exactly. No, you're it's just, you're not yelling at me. No, no it's me oh. punch you with this point. It's Meow. because you can't. I, I feel so much better now. I have no yeah. coordination. Wait, why Sal's always mad, dude, yeah. when he writes? I know. Uh, yeah, I yeah. thought that was some blog thing. So did you guys? Okay, what was your worst subject growing up? Like, just you did. If you did bad at anything, what was it? What was it? Mm, oh. My worst subject. Yeah, uh, I hated math, but I think that's because I didn't have good math teachers. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't. I really couldn't stand it. What about you, Justin? Yeah, it was it was probably between math or like chemistry for me. It was anything that I had to like memorize everything. I sucked at memorizing things, so mm. I had to it, it, as long as I learned, uh, you, you know, and I figured it out for myself. I did really well, but uh, everything else, like I you were good. At, did you ever get a D or an F? Did you ever get a bad grade with that? I think a C was the lowest. Yeah, I got, I got a D one time, and it was I was out because I had my wisdom teeth removed, and then I was had the flu, and I had I was out for like a couple. Don't weeks. give me all your excuses. I'm what just the, saying. What was this? I'm like, saying this guy. Right to, he's like defending his case back in fifth grade. Hey, I said I'm still salty about my, it. My teeth and this yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. And it was rainy outside. Yeah. I, wanted and to, the, I wanted to strangle this, this uh, kid teacher. Was, this kid was bullying me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All these things happened. At Come once. out with it. What was it? What, it was what? in. It was in. Uh, we did quals, which was like uh, in chemistry. You had to do like this whole process. So so. Chemistry. Yeah, but it was like in labs where you have to actually do all the lab work. And so, like, they wouldn't let me make up all the lab work. And so they gave me a, a, a D. Mm. This guy is it. So, so that was my bad grade, was chemistry. Was yeah. it really? Yeah, yeah, chemistry. I didn't like chemistry. I got a C in math, uh, geometry, I think it was. And it, and I it's because half the time I didn't even show up. Yeah. I just didn't show up and I would pass the test. And that was the. You know what's funny, too, is I hate math. And I have a son who's a math wizard. 
Oh, uh, yeah. The kid's going to probably, he's in uh, honors algebra two and as a sophomore. So he'll, yeah. he'll finish high school calculus. My kids are going to teach me math for really? sure. Really? I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Well, they learn way earlier now, too. You know, personal training helped me with math a lot. I can count pretty good to 12, three sets, all that, you know, <laughs> yeah. subtract a couple reps. <laughs> I'd be pretty good with that. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. My favorite class was cartooning. What that about you, Doug? Do you, can you remember all the way back then? Huh? It's just, been a while. Huh? What, uh, where, where did you get Alchem hit? Alchemy hey, was his favorite yeah, class. Yeah, when did you get hit with a ruler? Tell us. I didn't get hit with a ruler, but they did have paddles back in the day that had big oh. holes in them. Did you ever get paddled? Wow. I did not. Fortunately, uh, I did not. But I knew people who did. Do you did. know why? Do you guys know why they put the pat the holes in the paddles? Uh, it make, hurts more. I, I guess you get more uh, velocity. Yes. Yeah. How crazy is that? Less wind resistance. They literally, <laughs> they made objects to hit kids with. You're yeah. not even their parent. Turn your ass into Swiss cheese. And someone's like, we got to make these things faster. They would display it with pride at the front of the room. Yeah. It's, it's like, okay, this is your some, future. Hey, so, some so, believe so, this is what's wrong with our country is that we got rid of this. Yeah. Oh, bring back the <laughs> You know, they say, spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I definitely I definitely think if, if children were Hardcore. Beat, beat more often, they'd wait. be better. Wow. That's what I think. Wait, hey, wait. So you uh, so you now. didn't have any bad grades, Doug? I actually did very well in school, uh, especially high school. I did struggle, actually, in elementary school. Uh, math was my nemesis. Weren't you chubby in high school? I, mean, I in was. High? No, uh, high, uh, elementary school, I was the chubbiest. I slimmed down as the years progressed, but I was still chubby. Mm. Mm. He was also, I know this because uh, when I used to tra train Doug and we would talk about this kind of stuff, he was uh, scrappy. He used to fight yes, and nobody messed with him. <laughs> Which is not me now. Did that you we, get did you get a lot of fights? As a I kid? did. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. In elementary school, I was uh, a fighter. I got a lot of fights in elementary school. Yeah. Elementary school yeah. fighter. I would take was Doug. A bothered child. I would take Doug over all you guys in a fight. Well, I had yeah, training, dude. by the way. Yeah. I had a six-year-old brother <laughs> who liked you. to beat up on me. So <laughs> you learned oh, how to fight. Like I learned that. how to fight to win. Mm. I, yeah, Doug's pro Doug will fight to the death. I feel like yeah. hundred yeah. percent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do all the dirty stuff, dude. So, um, you know, the supplement industry is one of my favorite things to study. Yes, and so I love uh, looking at new emerging categories of supplements. Oh, is there a new new thing coming Dude, out? Dude, there's an exploding category of supplements. So, yeah. I, you know, I've been into supplements for a long time, ever since so I started working out. And what? Exploding. Maybe. Yeah. So I there's like different categories. That, like I remember when the pre-workout category was essentially invented and that exploded. I remember when marketing for protein powders got really smart and they said, have it post-workout and nighttime protein and all these different, you know, intro workout supplements, like all these categories. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read to you names of just names of supplements. Okay. And then you guys guess. What is in it? Guess what the category of supplements it is. Oh, it's okay. in. That's okay. growing. Oh, I like this game. So much. So I'll start with the no the names that are less like telling, and then we'll just go to the ones that are very. <laughs> okay. All right. So Raging Bull. So that's the name Ooh, of one. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, an obvious. Are, we, are we guessing as you go through? Oh, no, no. Wait These are get, all one category. Wait till oh, I get wait, done. We'll wait for it. These are all in the same category. Wait for okay. It. Uh, volcano. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. High volume. Yeah, I think it's pretty, <laughs> hold on, I think hold it's pretty on. obvious where we're going. Hold here. on. Okay. Max okay. load. Ooh. <laughs> that could be like your PR. These are all the, names of supplements? These are the names of supplements. The mother load. Wow. <laughs> That's another one. It's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to get better. Ready? Yeah. Semenax. <laughs> <laughs> now it's getting obvious. Yeah. Max eject. What? Max eject. And, and here's another one. This is for real. It's the name of a supplement. I swear to God, you can look this up. Max yummy cummy. No. Sure. <laughs> no. Now, now, are any of these done by a popular brand that any of us are familiar with? Um, some of them are it's brands good that, you, latte. that you might you might notice. I, I didn't look up the, the brands. Yeah. But there's a category of supplements that is growing that is all about increasing uh, the amount of semen you produce. Wow. That's literally the category. Of There's the some demand there, huh? Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> like a load is in like five of them. I mean, who's like measuring this? Like, I mean, what? I'm not gonna lie. Don't you want to try it just a little bit? Uh, well, <laughs> well, the ingredients just that they to see if it works. You know, <laughs> what do you mean? I just want to see if it works. Yeah. What are you gonna test before and after? Oh, you'll know. I, come on, I mean, guy. come on. I'm pretty. Come I'm on, pretty guy. Don't you even try it with me? Yeah. <laughs> come on, guy. <laughs> <laughs> your, Adam's so persuasive. Your wife buys yeah. them for you. <laughs> Honey, I got you a supplement to try. Yeah. No, so um, I look at the ingredients. Pancakes already. I look at the ingredients, right? Apparently, there's a demand for this, and I was reading up on this. I'm like, why is this a supplement category? Yeah. And they're saying it's because the uh, the prevalence of pornography, men now are wanting, uh, you know, more 
I guess, production or whatever. It's becoming a thing. And it's a growing mm. category. But I looked at the ingredients of all these supplements to see, like, what are they putting in these? Like, what are they saying that's going to make this? Right. And the, believe it or not, a lot of the ingredients are legit. And so, like, for example, uh, Tongkat Ali, uh, that's a product that has been around for a long People have used it for hundreds or maybe thousands of years. It does increase sperm quality, semen volume, might increase testosterone. Mm. Ashwagandha is in a lot of them. Deaspartic acid. Is in a lot of them. So I mean, they're all these are all like what used to be in <laughs> testosterone boosting categories, and they're just rebranding them as like you know load enhancers or whatever wow. you want to call load it. Load assault. Yeah, I could have. Yeah. <laughs> ble- you should see the ah! oh ball refill. That was yeah. another one. <laughs> it's used to see the pictures too yeah. on the on the bottles. I wonder, can you Chamber. see how much how much money is in it? Is there a lot of money? Well, I mean, they're selling the bottles for you know 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. So the margins are probably the same as they would be for. I would imagine. I wonder if the margins are bigger because it's a newer. Normally, that's how it is, right? Normally, until it gets flooded. Yeah, right. Normally, when if you're one of the early <laughs> early adopters, panspermia. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Whoa! So I went on. I started reading the reviews on some of these. They're great. They're uh, so that, great. Yeah. yeah, my girlfriend's yeah, how do you so happy. That, right? <laughs> <laughs> is she really so satisfying? Yeah, is she really? Is she really happy? Come on. Yeah. I don't know about this. Yeah. Anyway. Finally. And uh, more crazy news. Did you guys know that you could die from eating black licorice? No. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's disgusting. Why the hell would anybody eat it? But too, anyway. Too much of it. I like black licorice. Do you really? I do. So this was a report. That was, so there was a man apparently that died from eating too much black licorice. Now you think to yourself, he must have ate 15 yeah. pounds of the stuff. Right. In order to, you know, to, to die. Right. Well, they put out a they re, they put out a like a what is it? Like a press release. And it says if you're 40 years of age or older, eating 2 ounces of black licorice, Which is, t- that's not a lot. No, 2 ounces is nothing. What is that? Like it's, it's like five sticks or whatever. Of and it's got to be real black licorice, right? Eating 2 ounces of black licorice a day for at least 2 weeks. So consistently, yeah. could land you in the hospital with an irregular heart rhythm or arrhythmia due to the presence of the compound glycerin. Glycerin. So apparently, this there it is right there. Sounds like a Snoop Dogg <laughs> <laughs> ingredient. You know, like. Glycerin. Yeah. Glycerizic acid uh, is what it does is it, it it can change potassium levels in your blood and throw off your electrolytes. So this, yeah, there it is, right there. A man died after eating a bag of black licorice dude, how, today. What? Like, and they didn't know about this, dude. I tell you what, dude. Like, does that mean that those uh, red vines will have uh, yeah. like a label now on or warning label? No, red vines don't have See, that. I, no, what do you mean? Red vines do? They make a black licorice. Oh well, uh, are they called red vines still? Yeah, it's the br- red vines is the brand. Okay, so they vines. make black and they make the black licorice and they make the red licorice. Whatever. See, I could see red dying red, 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 red. Uh, like in like drinking too much Jägermeister. Right? Yeah, because that's obvious. Well, what an embarrassing way to die. Like, if you're gonna die of doing something too much, like at least make it well, drugs. especially when know, it's right? not that much i mean I, uh, there's probably a lot of people that eat a thing of licorice almost every day i mean that that's like a <laughs> adam <laughs> <laughs> he's worried right I, now I, I normal thing. Yeah. no you know those you know those tubs that you get from costco yes. like that's a, in, oh, yeah. in office spaces that's a very common thing like katrina used to buy that for her boss all the time she'd bring that they well, and good they, and plenty right? yeah remember those that's my that's one the, of my favorite candies you know what's yeah. funny about this is i think more people haven't died from this because literally black licorice is disgusting well, this arisen is going to come after it, you <laughs> does it taste good? no it's an older thing when you get older you like it really i hated it growing up now i like it weird do you like, like pecan ice cream i okay. hated pecan ice cream when i was a kid really? love it now yeah pecan's weird. good dude mm. weird my, my weird, dad used to, weird stuff like my dad used to buy sp- your taste buds change when you get old right doug <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes from experience drastically yes. yeah. <laughs> especially over the decades <laughs> yeah. while he eats a werther's original over there <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the, Those the are other good the other thing is yeah. like your your, candy, your tolerance for like hot sauce and stuff goes way high when you get older too yeah you ever seen doug with the like the green sauce compared no. to us he goes crazy uh, yeah. yeah it's like it's by age on how much no, I that. I'll put Tabasco on stuff now. I'm Actually, like, why? By the way, that's a secret. By the way, you, you, this is good for you, Adam, because you're a new dad. Mm. Uh, if you want to keep your kid from eating your food, yeah. just tell them it's spicy. Yeah, put red pepper Ooh, flakes. No, no, no. Don't put anything on it. Just say it's spicy. That's the only thing that works. If mm. you tell a little kid, uh, you want some of that spicy? Mm. Oh, I don't want it. Yeah. But anything else, they'll try. It tastes gross. I want it. Oh, okay. it. Spicy, they won't. They won't do it. So here's my question for you, because you're a connoisseur on licorice. I know you like it a lot. <laughs> Do you like? I don't know if I'm a connoisseur, but what's, go ahead. What's better 
Red vines or Twizzlers? Oh, red vines for sure. Twizzlers, yeah. Twizzlers taste, are gross. Yeah, Twizzlers are like a fake, fake cherry flavored like yeah. licorice. It's like I can't <laughs> like it's red vines believe it's from, not butter. Yeah. Red, red vines are candy. natural. Yeah, <laughs> from the tree. Yeah, the red vine tree. Right, that's where they come from. Right. Yeah. 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 No, red vines are kind of plasticky. Mm. Not, as bad. not red Twi- vines. Twiz- excuse me, Twizzlers. Yeah, Twizzlers yeah, are, Twizzlers are the worst. Yeah. But is that still your favorite? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't eat a lot of licorice. I was just saying that I know that's a thing that where people bring those big tubs. That's common. Mm-hmm. There was a, there, I, I went through a phase where that was like in my house. You know, those just because those things were like five bucks for that massive. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's a fat free food, by the way. Yeah, exactly. That's what right? it says on the yeah. on the label. Oh yeah. So I think I think at one point everybody had those in their house. I right? think uh, what's his name, Doctor Integrity, didn't he recommend eating them post workout? I don't. They he recommends Sour Patch Kids. Oh my bad. Is he yeah. still doing that? They, they all do. Dudes. That's like the that's like the the trendy thing to do in the last five mm-hmm. years. I hate that, dude. I hate when the fitness space comes up with ways to to like justify eating garbage. Mm-hmm. Are you going to eat garbage? Just say it. I'm eating garbage instead of being like, you know, actually, yeah. this the sugar is good for recovery, so I like to eat candy post-workout. Mm. That's why I'm so jacked. It's not because I take steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got a great show for you guys. What is it? Uh, and it, I totally stumbled across this because uh, I had signed up for, I don't know, Epix or Stars or one of those things like through Apple Plus. I was just like, ah, whatever. I got to get a new show somewhere. And this is not a new show. This is just a show that was out. It's called Black Sales. It's like uh, about the pirates and whatnot. And, you know, it had had plot kind of like, um, uh, well, Blackbeard and, you know, this whole story around that and all that. But then all of a sudden, boom, there was just TNA everywhere. Whoa. It, it just hit us like, like, whoa, like this is <laughs> like, this is totally almost like borderline, like hardcore. And it would, and it was just like a regular show. What is it on? It's on, I think it's on stars, but, uh, you know, with your lady, you know, it's, uh, it's like, it's a good time. Yeah. Is what's it, up with pirates and that kind of stuff? It's, it's a thing, Isn't I guess. That, wasn't that your guys' favorite uh, dirty movie when you guys were young? Yeah. It's very similar to that. Yes. <laughs> it's like no comment. Adam's face is yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I still watch that one. That, yeah. Well, that DVD won all kinds of awards. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Don't act like you don't know that. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody that. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows like the like the like the most famous porn is pirates. Is this, this one really? actually has it's plot though? So I was actually you know look, like, look at, still like, tied into it. Doug, look up uh, top five. Porn, porn DVDs of all time or whatever. Great, I, bet you, I have to do this, sir. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we, you do. <laughs> don't act like it's not already in then, your fucking then, cookies. Then you wonder why his uh, computer freezes all the yeah, time, yeah, yeah. Adam. He's, yeah. already, he's hey, already looking at it. I got a question for you guys, actually. Mm. I was uh, you know, keeping up with our sponsors and stuff. What does climate neutral mean? Climate Viore, uh, Viore just got a certification. So Viore, the, the, for the listeners that don't know, they make uh, athleisure wear. We wear it all the time. Great stuff. Does that mean they're like a net zero? It's like not too hot, car, slightly like car- breezy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, just you know, like, yeah. I, I think that means you're you're like a net zero car- carbon footprint. So what does that mean? Like so you're for giving, every shirt you grow a tree or something like that? Yeah, I think that's what it would be. Something uh, like that. But that's okay. not what they do. They're not like that. Mir does that, right? That plants the tree every time. Like what does what does Viore do? I don't know. I, th- I, I first I was thinking it's like they're just, you know doesn't identify with a climate. You know? yeah. Stupid yeah, climate I neutral. Like, I'm, I'm no, neutral. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up right now. I didn't because, even know it was a real thing, but it, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, it says it, they. It's a okay. Here's the. Here's do they get the, a better tax break for that? But you do. Um, Probably. It says Viore announces climate neutral certification, and it's says here how do we get viore a leading performance apparel brand has successfully achieved climate neutral certified status by measuring you're right adam measuring its 2019 greenhouse gas emissions footprint purchasing carbon credits to offset that footprint and implementing plans to reduce emissions this year and uh beyond you know uh, all joking aside um i like the fact that there seems to be a strong market demand now for Envi- environmentally conscious. Yes. Like, yeah. you know, it's it's not, okay, they make good clothes, they look good, those are all selling points, probably the more important selling points, right? Because otherwise people wouldn't buy their stuff. But uh, it also makes you more competitive when you can show that you're environmentally conscious, mm-hmm. which, you know, I tell you what, that wasn't a market 10 years ago. No, it wasn't. No, nobody bought anything because it was- Well, no, it's become now like part of the business plan, right? Before you even decide you have a legitimate business, they're already factoring that in. Right, Which already, is this is not a bad thing? No, it's not at all. No, I, I mean when I was a kid, McDonald's served stuff that lasted in the earth for ten thousand years. Remember everything was in styrofoam. Mm-hmm. Remember that when cheeseburgers and stuff on styrofoam, you yeah. put that they put they throw that away. It's there for your forever. Speaking of McDonald's, did you see the article that Jackie shared with you? Uh, the, the rapper, like, so uh, they had a Travis Scott burger. And now they got a I forget who the other guy is. Oh, the, yeah. the famous Latin singer burger. That's like. 
my or my uh, uh, McDonald's is is partnering up with a lot of these famous people and then making like special meal. And it's like all they're doing is like so he, like he takes the pickles off the the Big Mac. <laughs> you just change one little like yeah, mo- modification. It, smart marketing though. I mean, it's working. I mean, people get all all excited about it because it's a Travis Scott. Brother. Yeah, I heard about it. it's it's gained a lot of traction. I didn't know anything about it, and my brother was the one actually tell me about it. Like it that, that this is a thing. Like the Travis Scott burger. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I would never write off McDonald's. They are absolutely brilliant with their marketing. And and, and I will say this, till this day, I don't like their burgers, uh, uh, but they their French fries blow uh, still to this day. You're not, a, you're not a Big Mac or a quarter pound guy at all? I always hated it. It's not McDonald's. really, a, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't taste like a burger. Oh, I didn't tell you guys. I had a Whopper the other day. I had a Burger King burger the other day. Dang. First time in like maybe 15 years. Did you really? Yeah. Did we, you have diarrhea? Yeah. I, it was, you know, it didn't hit me as bad as I expected it to hit me. <laughs> not as bad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It got me. It got me. You know what I'm saying? It's getting me for sure, but not as bad as I thought. But I also only had one. I didn't like- Now, does it remember? Do you, does it taste like you remember? No, it de- it never does. That's what's interesting about those foods, right? Well, I remember growing up and like loving things like Taco Bell and burger. I mean, I ate fast food all the time growing up. Yep. And, you know, once you've not had it for, you know, a decade or more, and then you go back, I've done that with a couple of fast food chains where it's been like, oh, you know what? It's been so long. Let's mm. just try. I used to love this as a kid. I remember this was, this was quite a while back, at least like five, 10 years ago. Uh, I hadn't had Taco Bell since I was a kid. And I thought, oh, you know, what? Taco Bell was my favorite as a kid. Mexican pizzas and whatever they, they, <laughs> They, they, they just took they, two, they just took two cultures and combined <laughs> yeah. it. Mexican pizza it was brilliant, by the way, yeah. and I love that. Smash as a kid. it together. Oh, I had it. I had it. Not that well. It was years ago, but I had it. And after I had not had it for like a decade, and it just it just tore me up. It didn't taste good going down. It's like they almost like it felt. It so, t- what state of mind were you in to go to Burger King? That's, uh, that's desperate, desperate. Okay. Yeah, we had we were driving. I don't remember. We were, we were driving from somewhere. hadn't hadn't ate. I didn't eat breakfast. I hadn't eaten from the day before. Max was fucking irritable in the car. It was just like I need to eat. Like, and we still had like a you know three hour drive ahead of us and uh, traffic. And I'm like, like oh, just give me something. Just need to wolf it down. And it was like after it was like late, right? So there wasn't a lot of options. You know, when you're when you're trying to look for food at ten o'clock at night, there's not a lot of like, and on the road. So I just I told Katrina, I broke down. I said, listen, I'm pulling in. I just want to get like a, a burger, a Whopper, right? Get a simple burger. And I just I committed to whatever the next one, the next exit. If I had to pick one of the big uh, like fast food restaurant chain burgers, uh, Carl's Jr. still wins. Yeah, in my opinion. Now does I does agree. does In and Out and Five Guys fall in that category? I don't I, can, I don't count them in that because I don't know why I don't. Yeah, no, they should. They should be right. Yeah, I th- yeah. I feel like they, those they cr- are different. Yeah, they crush them. They have the best burgers. Yeah, for sure. And they're the ones that that I've never stopped eating. Right. So Five Guys and and In and Out has been a part of my life forever. Well, I didn't really eat. I'm trying to think. I didn't have In N Out until much later. Like as a little as a kid, I don't think it was around here. Was <laughs> I it? I think it's because they're more expensive or something. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. I had I had McDonald's. Is that what it is? Maybe. Maybe you feel there's like this like I don't know. They have that on them. I, you, you kind of feel like the quality's better, but I doubt it. I just I don't remember them being a lot a lot of them around. No, That's, there wasn't. Yeah. No, there wasn't. My, you know what's funny? Yesterday I was I was uh, hanging out with my son and he says, you know what? He goes, I've never had Jack in the Box, Carl's Jr., or Taco Bell. My kids never had either any wow, of those. Wow, really? I, never. Yeah. Because we don't eat it. We don't. We just don't do it. That's now, awesome. They've had McDonald's chicken nuggets because when they were little, and their grandma was uh, still around, she would take them to get nuggets sometimes. But they'd never had any of that stuff. So I'm almost thinking because my son's 15, right? So I'm almost thinking like it would be kind of fun to do like a little field trip and have them, you know, <laughs> try these, you know, try these things. In the minivan, yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> Here's your dad, all your dad's yeah. favorite things right. that he ate yeah. as a kid growing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah going to do a tour. Yeah, when I was a kid, my jam was the the court, double quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah. McDonald's, that was my favorite. Mm. But Justin, anymore. you brought up shows. I got one for you. And I really, Sal, I really want you to watch this. I'm, I'm just- Does I, it have to do with sports? Yes. Mm. It does. It's, I'm already so net. You know, know do it. every Tell once in a while, Netflix does something that I'm like impressed with. Like they've done a really good job of like looking at other streaming services and going like, okay, what where what can we do that's competitive with that? Uh, I I pay uh, for uh, ESPN Plus, which is. Got all the cool thirty for thirty <clears throat> and E sixty, which are I love like good sports uh, documentary shows like that are short clips on you know some coach or an athlete that I'm unaware of, and yeah. they tell the whole backstory. They, and they do just such a good job doing it. So Netflix came out with like their rival show to that, and it's called The Playbook, and um, and it it's it's like they take they take these coaches 
that I mean, I'm like maybe I'm familiar with them, but I don't know their whole backstory and, and really like all their accolades. And then and they and they're they're talking to like the most the top of the top in whatever sport and all over the world. So you know, soccer and volleyball and I mean every tennis like. And so there's a lot of these coaches I'm not aware of that are just like super bad. And hearing their story, like what has made them great, is phenomenal. So I think, so they they talk about like their coaching techniques and style. yeah and like yeah. So mm. that, uh, you'll appreciate that. It's less about the game. It's more about their leadership qualities that that turn them into great. Like oh, for example, cool. there's a a coach, and <clears throat> I'm sure people that are into the sport will make fun of me for not knowing the name, but uh, Serena Williams coach. Uh, his his backstory is like really interesting. He was a kid who was he and he talk, and he talks about like one of his like one of his points is that you know making your greatest weakness into one of your greatest strengths, which you know, I talk about I say that all the time, right? He stole your quote. He did. Yeah. That's how I felt yeah. when I was watching it. But he's older than me, so obviously he had it first. <laughs> so <clears throat> he as a kid was like unbelievably shy. Like he he was in, they put him in therapy for a year. And and for uh, one day a week, every 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 so fifty two right sessions, never said a word for a year, for a wow. whole year sitting in therapy, and that the reason why they had him in therapy was because he wouldn't talk to other kids, he was really mm-hmm. insecure and shy, but during that entire time of growing up, it, it because he was scared to say anything or talk anything, he like analyzed people's behaviors, their mm-hmm. way that their mm-hmm. facial expressions, the way they walk, their posture, the way they move and just became like this, this br- brilliant. Interesting. At, and then he also loved tennis and he was a, a good tennis player, but never became great, but could like really read their body language. And if they were scared, they were nervous, they were playing timid, they were playing too aggressive. Like he got so, so good at that, that that's that carried over into uh, him being this. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's him and, right there. Yes, that's him. How do you say his last name? Yeah. Mar- Maratoglu? Maratoglu? Patrick Maratoglu? That does sound interesting. You it's know, really interesting. So, so okay, all, you know, I know I joke around about not being into sports, which is true. I really don't care too much. But um, as an early trainer and then manager, there was a coach, not because of their watching sports, but rather because of the books that they wrote that had a huge influence on me, Vince Lombardi. You ever oh, yeah. you ever read his like his how he would coach and some of his qu- there's some quotes that he's amazing that you don't that you are familiar with but you don't realize they came from Vince Lombardi for example like it's not whether you get knocked down it's whether you get up that's Vince Lombardi um, you know winning isn't everything it's the only thing right that's yeah. also we Vince call Lombardi. the up downs uh, Lombardis really yeah yeah so and so I, I he actually had a huge impact on me as a manager yeah but not because of football but rather because of what he wrote um, which you know really did uh, resonate with me well I think that's what made me so passionate about like I when I was first getting into training I was a trainer for only about a year before I moved into management and leadership. And I fell in love with the leadership aspect of trainers more than I ever did being a trainer. Like being a trainer was cool and fun, but I really enjoyed leading a team. Like, and I think that comes from the sport aspect mm-hmm. of like coaching and leading. And you know, it's there. You getting a bunch of players that there was another one on a, on a soccer coach that is like world renowned that I don't remember his Justin's name. Justin's favorite sport. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, he he went out and got a bunch of no name player, and he's like, Ooh. I would rather go get a bunch of no name players that have specific characteristics and qualities that build that that would build this bond uh, within with each other opposed to going out and getting five of the most talented players in the world and like he proved that method to be extremely successful and i, I most really good leaders know that right like i'd much rather have a team of trainers, totally. uh, of people that are bought into the system totally. bought into yeah. you know us together as a group versus indi- you know talented individuals and the extreme of that is moneyball right yeah no at- which is like yeah which i actually have issues with mainly because of the it, it sort of uh, takes away a little bit of the team bonding unity like loyalty aspect to things uh, but it does make sense in terms of, um, you know, analyzing everybody in terms of stats and really, uh, you know, going for those uh, small plays that that end up getting you where you want to go. Well, it can, but I actually disagree with that. I think what ends up happening when you do that is you get, I mean, imagine money, like Moneyball, which I love that story too. You get these guys, you know, Billy Bean gets all these players who nobody cared about yeah, and they put them all on a team. So they all immediately have a chip on their shoulder of kind of being the leftovers or nobody cares about or didn't think of don't didn't scout them didn't think they were great players yeah. and put all those guys in one group and I bet you mm. money they all come together they come together and are like you know and they all play with that similar chip yeah 
So, they, they do, but then they also get traded right away. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, which is, uh, for the fans, it's, I guess my point is for the fans, it sucks. Be- yeah. Because uh, there's a part of watching sports, too, that like you – you like get attached to these players and mm-hmm. you really want to see them in their success. And then they leave and it's like, wow, I still want them to succeed, but it's like, I still have this loyalty to the team. So it's, I don't know. I'm well, that, about it. Well, that I understand. Cause they're, they're, you're right. Cause that was like their, that was their mm-hmm. business model. Their business yeah. model was get all these players for cheap, yep. take them far into playoffs. Like or, the Bash brothers would have never existed, yeah. which would have, you know, destroyed oh, me yeah. as a human it's, being. Uh, Mark yeah. McGuire and Jose Canseco. Oh, look hey, at look you. At look sometimes, at you sometimes I remember. Sports ball facts. Yeah. Sometimes I remember something. I love it. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to hear something crazy? Yeah. So, so they are researching right now. They did a study with animals on THC and COVID. Really? Yeah, they found. So they did an animal. They did it with rats, and they the survival rate rate went through the roof when they gave the rats with COVID uh, THC versus the control group, which was rats who just Was had- it really just a scientist getting high and then was like, I'm just going to blow this on see what happens? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, they gave it to him. And they say the reason why it works is because of the way that THC and other cannabinoids um, tamp down the immune response. Because one of the ways that COVID kills people is you get this runaway inflammatory immune response where your body starts attacking itself. Yeah. And so now they're funding research on THC for COVID specifically. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that wild? That's yeah. so crazy. It's so crazy. This All the marijuana companies loving that. Oh, yeah, oh, dude. Bet. It yeah. was this drug that was so illegal for so long, and now they're like, oh, it can potentially help with cancer. Oh, it can help with this disease that's causing this pandemic. I don't know. What I will tell you is I am sold on the this whole CBN kick that you were on for Bro, a long time. Bro, oh my God. it puts you to... Wait, did, yesterday I saw... Didn't you do it combination with the, yes. the blue blockers? It, th- okay, so that is the move, right? Like, so putting the, putting the blue blocker glasses on, like, you know, I talk about trying to be consistent with that at night when the sun goes down and then adding in the the ned sleep mm-hmm. oh, that yeah, stuff is some of the best combo. oh some of the best sleep I've okay had. so let me ask you guys this so now i've used it now um at least 10 times i'd say at least 10 nights i've used it mm-hmm. and for sure this is definitely a side effect of the sleep i sleep hella good i wake up rested i don't wake up groggy it's very very effective in fact if i take it and don't go to sleep i can feel like oh i need to go go to sleep right now I get vivid dreams. Like mm-hmm. I get really, really good, strong, vivid dreams. Have you guys noticed that? Uh, no, I don't know if I get that from that. Yeah, I'm just pretty much darkness. You know? Really? It's just all black. Oh, man. It's yeah. like, like yeah. the inside of you. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I also sm- like I also, I also smoke a lot at night, so that there that always gets rid of the dreams, right? Dude, so. I had I've been having I had the weirdest dream last night that the that we murdered someone and hid the body. <laughs> What? I don't know. I don't understand it. Yeah. You ever have a dream where you're like, why would I dream this? We murdered someone. Was it in Vegas? We hid the body. Uh, you got Next time you have a dream, you got to message me. I'll look it up in the dream book and tell you what it is. I don't know what it was, but we hid mm. the body in the foundation of a property, and then we bought the property. That way nobody would ever find it. And here's the weird thing. <laughs> I, I know, dude. I woke up. You ever do this? You wake up in, in the middle of the night through the dream. You're not dream. sure if you did it or not? Yes, dude. And I'm literally- <laughs> I'm watching li- Goodfellas? I'm literally what? sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself, like, how am I going to tell Jessica what happened? Like, this is terrible. I can't believe. And I'm like, oh, it didn't happen. Oh, my God. I feel. And I go back to sleep, <laughs> right back into the dream. <laughs> right back into the dream as soon as oh, I fell asleep. Phew, didn't do it, dude. That stuff. I have. I sleep so hard on it that I'm. I'm. I'm using it nightly to see if it wears off. Like, does wow. it? Do I start to get you know used to it or whatever? But so far, if I take, I'm that, still new. So maybe you know the next few times I'll get. Some I also notice a big difference too. I don't know if you guys mess with the the blue blocker glasses on the the nighttime ones versus the daytime ones. I can wear so like the nighttime ones will make you drowsy. Right. If yeah. I'm if I like sometimes I need to stay awake at night and mm-hmm. I'm like studying or whatever and I'll be I'll wear the daytime ones even though it's nighttime because I'm not trying to fall asleep and it, f- it takes away the strain on my eyes. I still when I decide to take them off and go to bed I can still fall asleep relatively quick the actual nighttime ones if i once i put them on like an hour later I'm if i'm tired. gonna watch a movie that's yeah. like longer than an hour or something i don't i, ha- I have to switch out uh, i have to wear the daytime ones and then the, the nighttime ones about 30 minutes before i want to go to bed because i won't be able to finish the movie yeah i start to find myself getting i feel like drowsy. such a hippie i never thought i'd be this guy what do you mean yeah, just <laughs> wearing the blue blocker glasses and then i got the salt <laughs> lamp you know himalayan salt lamps I and, did that. like it's ever like it, it totally works no, dude, i'm not 
not going to stop. Are you saging the house? It's, yeah, exactly. It's, I feel like that's the next step. It's because, you know, it's when you get older, all of a sudden you appreciate sleep on a whole other level. Oh, yeah. yeah when yeah, you're a kid, yeah. you we think brag you're, about it. Yeah. When you're younger, you are you think, exactly. It's just like, <laughs> bro, I got so much good sleep <laughs> last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slept like I like a horse. To, I like to stay up all night. That's what I do. Yeah. No, but I mean, it, it, it. you know what it is? Okay. This is the big thing. I think when you get older, you, you start to put aside, like, Yes, you definitely can make fun of yourself about using these things, but you're open minded. If it works, it works. Yeah, that's the bottom line. No, that's it. Yeah, that's that's my measure. Because I remember we went to Paleo FX like three, four years ago, the first time, and we saw people wearing yeah. blue, you know, blue blocker yeah, glasses. That's a little yeah, ridiculous, don't, don't do though. That. Like, I, you know, and they I were wearing. Remember, they, everybody was wearing the toe so shoes. So pretentious. I, I do it. I do it when I know I'm going to be on a computer a lot, right? So if it's a day that I know I'm going to be in the middle of the day, if I'm going to be working on a, on a computer or my phone all day long, you'll catch me wearing wearing them in the middle of the day, or I use them at nighttime when I'm trying to prepare for sleep. Those are the two places I find the most value. Wearing them around like in a, like a convention where I'd be up all day anyways, and I'm like that to me still. And you're is, seeing orange all day. That to what me is doing? yeah. That to that's me that's more is, to show everybody. Yeah, else. that to me is still ridiculous. It's just like it it just doesn't add as much value to me to, yeah. to be wearing it. Oh, like dude, that. I read some some funny news today. This is hilarious. So a man in England got in trouble because of the mask he was wearing. Hmm? So he gets on a. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. What, he gets on a transit bus. Yeah, and he, it looked like he was wearing like a snake. Uh, skin scarf or something like that as a mask <laughs> and people until it started to move he actually had his pet snake wrap around his face and that's what he was using as his mask <laughs> <laughs> for real <laughs> yes dude what the genius yeah. so they, they he got in trouble for it because uh, apparently you can't use an actual snake you can't use a snake yeah i mean it's probably the same effect a lot a lot of places efficacy. won't even let you like so uh i was at uh in and out not that long ago and man you're just eating all kinds of fast <laughs> it, it sounds like it right now right yeah. <laughs> jesus adam so these are different times. It's like a few weeks in. One was uh-huh. breakfast. One was lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, we uh, this this I was watching all the people come in and out right, and this couple came in and they didn't have a mask, and so they did the whole like shirt put, up, put shirt your shirt, up. and they they won't serve you. So there's a lot of places. What's that, the difference? I know. Yeah, yeah, but they uh, but hey, the, you know, the kid, kid explained to them the that they they've here. been told that if you're not wearing the and there's they have they have a lot and you'll see it like on the buses there's like examples it has to be like one of these masks if it's not that doesn't count really yeah so and a lot of the, a lot because of the, cloth masks are accepted everywhere I know I know yeah. there's the guy with the snake look at that. Uh, it's like a huge ass like boa constrictor. Dude, how did it not like suffocate him like that? That's hey, crazy. I, here's what I think. I think it helps with social distancing. Ain't yeah, nobody exactly. Gonna yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> a big that's ass- the most effective thing you can do is stay the hell away. Yeah. Oh my god! Speaking of that, we finally watched together the uh, the freaking uh, what you gonna call it cartoon? Why well, South Park? Oh, South Park. Oh, thank yes. you. Oh yes. wow, that dude. was so. Good. They swung so hard on that one. They did. I appreciate it. They they, uh, they attempted to offend everybody. I wasn't. You know what? Yeah. As a kid, I didn't actually watch. A lot of South Park. Me neither. I liked it as I got older. Yeah. As I got older, I was like, "Oh, dude, this there's." So I just good. love their social commentary, and I would watch it. Just if there was something happening in the news where I knew like South Park is going to destroy this, like I would watch then. But I wasn't like I don't know. It was kind of obnoxious, like uh, after a while, because you knew that they're just going to shit on everything, you know. Oh, but I okay. So a little spoiler alert. I'll just give one part away. But I was like, I can't believe they showed the dude, the cartoon guy, banging a uh, bat. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Mickey Mouse from Disney, dude, and one of the characters. Yeah, I don't banged understand how, how they got away with that. Like, I how, have no idea. They got a whole ton of lawyers, I'm sure, before they released yeah, that. Yeah, I dude. mean, how can? Uh, yeah. Didn't they get sued by the Mormon Church at one point or something Sh- like that? Uh, no, I think the Mormons have been cool with them. Really? I, uh, yeah, I think it's. Or the, was it Scientology? Yeah, Scientology. Mm. Yeah, they're very litigious. Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah. Really? Bro, you'll get sued by Scientology faster than very almost anybody. litigious. More, yeah. more than CrossFit. Uh, well, it's probably equal. Well, they're both re- they're both religions, so <laughs> I, I guess. Know. Yeah, they're both uh, they got Kool Aid, so yeah. First question is from DKZ all day. What do you guys think about controlling a deadlift back to the ground versus dropping it? Great. Yeah, it's uh, so cool. All day? Say, yeah. the same, I had to add that for the bingo. The same yeah. thing that I would uh, say about any exercise, um, there's there's pluses and minuses to either one, right? So when you look at like an Olympic lifter and they do their lifts and they, they explode, swing the weight up at the top, whether it's a snatch or a clean or whatever, and they drop the weight, what they're trying to do is they're trying to work on their explosive power. Dropping yeah. the weight, re- first off, reduces the, the potential damage on the muscles, 
They're not really interested in, in super fatiguing the muscles. They don't really care too much about bodybuilding. It's about improving yeah. their performance. It's less risky. It's less risky. So deadlifting up and then dropping the weight, you'll still build strength. You're going to get a little bit less muscle growth, just like you would from mm -hmm. you know not doing the negative portion of uh, any rep. I'm guilty of dropping oh. a, de a deadlift sometimes when I'm I hit. I'm probably like a the biggest offender really? right here. Yeah. Well, well, you like the Olympic lift. Well, too. yeah, because and mainly like that was how I I, I learned uh, you know power cleans and everything else, and that's how I would deadlift was just to pick up the weight and then drop it because you know that risk factor is mm -hmm. always something to consider. But I liked uh, you, you know really pursuing more of that initial power and that that explosive output that I could uh, provide. Well, what you should do is you you obviously should not use the same weight, right? So I run I do this like in phases like we do in any, any of our programs. So if I have been, you know, lifting really heavy deadlifts and I've been dropping uh dropping the weight for some time, like then I'll switch it up and yep. reduce the weight to 50% and then really control the negative. So I just, it's a, I, I think for the, for the average person, right? Somebody who is just trying to be healthy, strong, build a good physique, lose body fat, build muscle. Just <clears> overall. <throat> overall. Yeah. This belongs in your routine. You should absolutely this phase. This is how you should mostly deadlift. Yeah. You yeah. should, you should run a phase where you do a very controlled negative and, and let the, set the weight down. At least a phase, if you don't always do it that way, mm -hmm. right? Because there's not tremendous value for somebody to be dropping and slamming, slamming the weight, especially if that you're not competing. Like if you're not competing to hit a, you know, specific PR. Well, even in powerlifting, you, if you don't bring the weight down, you get disqualified. You're yeah. not allowed to drop the weight. Yeah. But you can, you can drop it in your hands, right? You can let the weight fall. You don't resist the weight. Oh, you I know what you mean. Body down Hold the weight and yeah. go down. With yeah. It. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you still quickly. Yeah. You, you're still kind of dropping it. Right. Sure, so sure. you're, I mean, I, I, this is what this person's asking to me is like resisting it on the way down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Really slow, like slowing it, like a four second yeah. negative. Four, like, yeah. Four I'll do a four tempo. second negative on a deadlift sometimes just to, to change up my my training it's much more bodybuilding uh, that way yeah, that less... tears me up man. oh it will yeah. get, so effective it will get you it is I, i'll give you an example i will con i will relatively control a deadlift up into going up to about 400 pounds after 400 pounds i tend to i tend to drop i don't control a five plate deadlift the five plate deadlift for me so just to give you an example that's a hundred pound difference there's a big difference between dropping the weight and controlling it which one is going to build more muscle if i had to pick one it's obviously going to be controlling but if you do both and do them right, you're probably going to get better results. But I don't recommend dropping anything or going fast on anything on the mm. descent unless you're an Olympic lifter, advanced. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not really recommended. Or you're just having fun because it's pretty liberating. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but ah. I mean, if you watch like a – look, it's pretty telling, right? If you watch a – here's something you could do. Go on YouTube and watch Olympic lifters barbell squat and then watch power lifters or bodybuilders uh, barbell squat. Yeah. Very totally different. different. Very different. Olymp Besides the bar placement, you know, Olympic lifters like to have a, a high bar and much more up upright posture. They drop fast. They drop they fast. Bounce. So they can bounce back up. Yeah, they, and, and use that elastic energy. And that requires way more skill. Yeah. Way better control and yeah. way better stability. The average person drops high, down. High risk with that. You drop down fast in a squat. The average person, you are going to injure yourself. Yeah. That's not something I would recommend to to anybody. Which again, building more muscle overall. Always control the negative. The negative portion of a rep is just as important as the positive. Next question is from Little Lish. How do you tell the difference between being lazy and actually needing to take a day off? Oh, wow. I like this question because we, I know we talk a lot on here about like, um, you know, taking days off and recovering and rest. And it's, you know, and I'm, I'm always reminded that, you know, our show is geared more towards, you know, your average person, right? Like that's just wanting to be healthy and fit and not like your super advanced lifter. I mean, there's obviously a portion of people that listen to this show that would consider themselves advanced lifters and they lift consistently five to seven days a week, year in, year out. But that percentage is much smaller than the rest of the population that's, that's listening, including like our clientele. Mm -hmm. Rarely ever, okay? Did I have to tell clients of mine to take days off? Yeah. Most clients, uh, it was more about trying to keep them consistent and consistently coming in and staying consistent for months and years. Uh, that So the only time I, I think that it's really necessary is when I'm talking to somebody who is 
extremely fanatic. I mean, somebody in this room, right? So if I was talking to Sal or Justin, this conversation is like, hey, maybe you need to deload a little bit or maybe you need to back off. Like, have you been going really heavy for really long? And have you taken a day off or two in a while? Like, because they're they're fanatical about training. But everybody else, you know, most people haven't been that consistent for that long that it's necessary for them yeah. to take a day off. Yeah, you're probably lazy. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. More times than not, it's probably you're just being lazy. Is your body hurting? Do you have inflammation, joint pain? Is your sleep being interrupted? Are you noticing uh, issues with cold and hot tolerance? Are you noticing health issues? Then you probably need some time off. Otherwise, if you're just sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, "Ah, oh, man, I got to work out, but yeah. uh, I don't really feel like it." Am My I body's being not saying yes. Yeah, am I being lazy? Yeah, you're probably being lazy. In, yeah. in which case, just get up and and yeah. and. Do well, it. I usually gauge that too, like when I start going into it, and uh, you, you know, like uh, start working out, and and I could feel like my whole body is just like pretty much not providing any uh, strength or, or, you know, I, I just feel totally like, uh, like I don't have it that day. Like I'll, I'll, I'll either stop after I've gone halfway through, which rarely happens because for the most part, if I'm trying to consistently keep my body working out, you know, on a daily basis, I can fluctuate my intensity and I could actually provide recovery through that. And so for me to just, you know, take an entire day off and rest, uh, to me, it, it, like I don't really do that anymore. We talked to, remember we talked with uh, Dr. Andy Gaplin about this like maybe two or three years ago. And, you know, he even brings up the point that there's value in training when you're, you maybe should even take the day off sometimes, right? Like when you didn't get great sleep and when you are a little stressed, uh, occasionally doing that, it's the people that are gross offenders that really need to take that time off. Like if it's you are consistently lifting and you're not getting good sleep or you're consistently, intensely driving your workouts to where you are so sore. The occasional of doing that or intermittently doing that actually has some value. I mean, that's you're getting your body to adapt in like in a very stressful situation. Yeah, when, I feel like you should know. I mean, honestly, I think if you're the kind of person that you tend to overdo things, you tend to be type A, you tend to really be consistent all the time, then you might need a day off. Everybody else it tends to just be – I don't feel like it, you know. I don't feel like doing it. I'm maybe uh, being a little lazy. That's the vast majority of people. Honestly, if you're asking yourself this question, if there's ten people asking me this question, nine of them are being lazy. One of them uh, actually needs a day off. Right, and ju and to Justin's point, I think is, you know, why? Because even that, per even the person that probably the one person that technically could take the day off, they also could go to the gym and just modify intensity. That's yeah. the best way to do it. Right, is to go light, go easy, stretch, focus on mobility, focus on. There's always something, you know, that you could do, you know, whether it's restorative or it's just a totally different mentality you're bringing in uh, to the gym or even at your house. Like you could be doing something active that's, you know, provides recovery versus, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, optimize my body by uh, lifting weights. Next question is from Connor Nagel 07. When should you cap off your caffeine consumption and how do energy drinks contrast with pre-workout? Okay, so what does he mean by contrast? I with think just the difference between the two, like you know, pre workout and energy drinks, well, the same difference. Yeah, let's start with the first part. So, how do you know uh, when you should cap off your caffeine uh, intake? Um, when the side effects of caffeine start to become a little pronounced. Okay, mm. so when you notice that your anxiety is a little high, you're jittery, you start to get really strong crashes. So you have your caffeine, you feel great. Mm, get headaches. Then it hits, it drops off, and all, all of a sudden you feel super unmotivated and like you're, you're fiending for more caffeine. Uh, heart arrhythmia, um, excessive palm sweating, uh, you know, sleep issues. I notice TMJ uh, issues as well. Do you? So yeah, I'm like, I'm really like grinding my teeth or, or, you know, I can just feel that tension start to kind of make its way from my jaw down to my neck even. Yeah. And, and this is very individual, right? People have different tolerances to caffeine. Uh, their, their bodies metabolize it differently. Like my tolerance for caffeine is a lot lower than say Adams and, and especially Justin's, right? These guys can drink uh, way more caffeine than I can and be fine. And uh, for me, if I tried to match them, I would feel terrible. I might even get nauseous or sick. So you got to kind of feel this out uh, for yourself. So I've noticed for me, anywhere between 
250 to 400 milligrams in a day is about my peak. Well, don't you think that this is real? I mean, this is really hard for a lot of people to be able to, I mean, you listed off a bunch of potential side effects, but the truth is most people won't notice those things because they, they'll have gradually moved their way up and their body will have adapted to that mm. new milligram amount that they're now consuming. Yeah, but the side effects tend to grow. Yeah. You know, that's what sure, tends to happen. They, sure, they, they do, but they grow at such a, a slow pace in relation to the extra uh, dosage of caffeine that they may not really notice those things that and much. And they're, they're paying attention to when they feel better, which is when they're getting the caffeine. Right. Yeah. And so I, for me, uh, you know, I've just decided that, you know, once I get to a point where I'm having, you know, more than two or three cups of coffee slash energy drink slash pre workout in a day, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's just, a, I, and I don't ever want to be a slave to anything. Even if I'm not getting like crazy adverse effects, even if I'm not getting TMJ, I'm not losing sleep at night. I just don't. I mean, and here's it for, it, I mean, for financial reasons, like why spend the money yeah. on, on that much caffeine when I could cut it in half just by winging myself off for, a week or two and then going back yeah. on and then now it affects me like it's brand new again. Yeah. So mm -hmm. make no mistake, caffeine is a, is a powerful drug uh, for all intents and purposes. You're looking at a substance that you, you build a tolerance to. It's got addictive, very powerful addictive qualities for people who are like, yeah, right. Caffeine's not addictive. Okay. If you drink coffee every day, stop drinking it and see how you feel. You get very strong physiological uh, negative effects. You get those, uh, you know, uh, effects of where you could, your body it needs it. It fiends for it. It might take you a week or two weeks to start to feel normal. Um, it, overdose on caffeine is very easy. I mean, very very easy. Two hundred milligrams might be a normal dose for someone. Give them a thousand milligrams and they might die. Literally, that's the. Uh, in fact, I think a good percentage of them would probably die from a thousand milligrams. So it's a very powerful drug. It's just one of those drugs in society that's super accepted. So we tend to don't we don't treat it like yeah. a drug because anything that makes you productive is somewhat you know accepted. Well, well I mean, isn't it funny though? That's how it is. It's like I think of it like alcohol or like smoking weed or like anything else. It mm -hmm. is. It is. And so anytime any of those things creep into my life where I feel like okay, it's taking more control of me than I have control of it. That's my signal to, to come off. All right. Well, here's some hard uh, recommendation. Here's some specifics, right? So I used to tell my clients, I used to tell my clients, don't have any caffeine after about 3 p.m. Um, because for most people, even if you go to sleep, yeah. if they test you, it negatively affects your sleep if you drink it past 3 p.m. So that was a good control for people. They would drink coffee and then after 3 p.m. they would cut it off. If you find yourself needing coffee all day, like, okay, I need it in the morning to get started. Now I need it at lunchtime to keep going. Now I need it again. Now, oh, now I need it because I'm going to go home and be around the kids and I need more caffeine. Mm -hmm. Then you probably need to wean yourself off. And here's the wonderful thing. If you wean yourself off and reintroduce it, uh, lower doses now have an incredibly awesome effect uh, on your body. Yeah, I've also found that, you know, really focusing on hydration and drinking more water yeah. has helped me to in that transitionary, you know, period too, because I would get really bad headaches if I was trying to lower the amount of caffeine, like, because I was, I, I would get myself up to a ridiculous amount and then try and pull myself back. And uh, so that, that really helped in terms of, you know, providing more of that energy that lasts throughout the day too. So I wasn't going for that second second, third cup. I yeah. feel like you have to find your, your individual threshold on what amount, what dose is it difficult for you to come off of? And I treat, like I said, marijuana, Kratom. I use Kratom every now and then. Like there's, I have all these things that I've allowed that are, you know, considered would fall in that class of like drugs, right? Even though I know Kratom's like an herb, but it, if it's something that the body can become addicted to, whatever amount is difficult for me to say, I don't want to have it for two or three days in a row. That's my amount. Like that's the, my amount that I, uh, that's my threshold. So mm -hmm. somebody might be able to go all the way up to four, 600 milligrams of caffeine in a day and then go to zero for a week and not have any side effects. Yeah. If that's it, then maybe that's you. Maybe you're fine with that. But other people like Sal, gets up to 200, 250 milligrams of caffeine and then he goes to zero and he's got headaches and he's got problems with it. Like that's the, my thresholds before that. Yeah, so. it takes a lot of self-awareness, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you, you got to pay attention. It yeah. took me a long time to figure that out. I mean, I would take energy drinks and supplements and ephedra me me back too. in the day like it was yeah. like it was water. It took me a long time to kind of figure this out. Now, the difference between energy drinks and pre-workouts, energy drinks, lots of caffeine, pre-workouts, also lots of caffeine. Pre-workouts tend to have other compounds that have performance-enhancing 
or muscle building uh, type properties. So sometimes a pre-workout will contain creatine or they'll have beta alanine um, or they'll have alpha GPC or other compounds that help with uh, specifically athletic performance. So like uh, like Legion's pre-workout um, Pulse, for example, it's got caffeine. So it's got the same amount of caffeine uh, you may find in a really, really strong energy drink, but then it has all those other compounds that have uh, like muscle building or performance enhancing type benefits. The truth is though, what you feel is the caffeine. Like most people, when you talk about pre-workouts and energy drinks, the thing that has all this list of all these crazy positive things, right? That they, they throw in there so they can probably sell it for more. At the end of the day, the thing that you like oh, the yeah, most- Oh yeah, you take the cat. Although I will say this, alpha GPC, beta alanine, somebody who doesn't take stimulants, so somebody who doesn't ever take caffeine- They'll feel that. They'll feel uh, more focus, and studies will support this and prove this. But if you're used to stimulants, it's the stimulant you want. Yeah. That's what it is. Next question is from Warrior Monk Fitness. Is following your passion bad advice? You know, I love these Ooh. these broad uh, like recommendations or you know wisdom where they're like, follow your passion. How many times have you heard that statement yeah. on Instagram? You know, I think you're in trouble if you always follow your feelings or if you always follow your mind. I think you have to you have to be able to do both. Yeah. Always following your passion, you'll be chasing your feelings around all the time because it'll change too. And, and you may not you may not be pragmatic. You may not, may up, end up dating the wrong person because you're passionate about them. You may end up doing a job that doesn't really support you or your family very well because you're not being pragmatic. Um, your diet may be passion driven, in which case uh, you, you may not eat in the, in the right way. Your workouts might be the wrong workouts. If you always, I think passion and emotion are important as part of what makes us human, but just following passion um, I don't think that's a great message. I really, I didn't think you guys were going to go this direction. I thought I was going to be the one that was going to challenge that. I thought you guys <laughs> were going to be all pro, go for your passion. But, we're all wise. You know, I guess, I, you know, the, that show I was talking to about the playbook, one of the coaches kind of like uh, alluded to this and said, you know, doing things like that, you are, you're, you're driven by your feelings mm -hmm. and it, it isn't always the most logical decision. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you feel passionate about something because it makes you, you, you find it's fun or you enjoy it or currently at this moment in your life, you have a feeling around it, and it's that feeling that that drives that passion, and that may not always drive a logical decision in what you should be doing. And so, actually being able to, and it's and it's not also necessarily a bad thing either, because mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, whatever it is that you end up doing for the rest of your life, you're also passionate about. Maybe the spark that got you there, right? But I I know there's a lot of things in my life that I'm very passionate about today that I fell into because I was just open to doing a bunch of other things. And mm -hmm. so, and I and I think that this message for the the generation kind of coming up now I like the, being somebody who has had uh you know now what two three generations uh, that I've led underneath me and seeing like the the, the you know Gen Z and uh um, millennials and yeah millennials coming up and and how they're there this is like a, a very hot topic like finding something that they're yeah. so passionate about and they spent some of them spend so much time trying to find this passion that they'll turn other things yeah. opportunities away right yeah, that they that's don't, what i'm seeing they too. don't they don't do they don't do something and part of that is like just getting yourself and i mean look i i actually did not believe i did not actually love personal training that much like i liked personal training i really did like uh I, there was but what i found in it was other things that i ended up really being passionate about like i was in i was passionate about building a business i liked numbers i liked sales i didn't even know that was part of that but i found out that it was a big part of it which made me more passionate and fell in love with it and then i got into leading trainers and thought oh my god i don't like personal training at all i love leading trainers and so sometimes you don't know if it's going to be something that you're going to be really passionate about so turning away a lot of things because you're like oh i'm not really passionate about that i, I don't yeah. feel very passionate about it and so you you don't do it i think that's a, a silly way to, to yeah live i your think life. it's important to uh definitely don't turn away opportunities get involved in these opportunities and find where that passion lies within that experience and you know for me it took a while to kind of figure that out like what i really wanted to do uh, you know i did a lot of different types of jobs and, and it 
it, it definitely eliminated a lot of directions that I thought I wanted to go in, but I was like, well, I just, I don't like, I don't like this, 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 uh, you know, industry. I'm not really, you know, driven towards this, that other job I had, you know, there was a spark there. And so, you know, it, in terms of like just waiting for that passion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to present itself for you, I think that's a, that's a, a not the message I would put out there. I think if you're seeking to, to have passion for something that's going to serve you for the rest of your life, I would say find passion in, in growth. Okay. Because that'll, that'll always serve you. Yeah. No matter what happens in your life, if you're passionate about growth, it means you're going to embrace challenge. It means that you'll view failure, which you will encounter in your life a lot. Um, you'll view failure as a learning and growth process. I think that's a very smart uh, way to look at things. I think if you if you run by passion on specific things, you're going to screw yourself. And you know, to your point, Adam, about you know the, this, these generations coming up and having to find their passion, that's the result of a wealthy, easy, good society. Mm. I know some people are getting their feelings yeah. hurt right now because they think, oh, life is so tough or whatever. Okay, I'm talking about in comparison to how it's always been for people. Okay, go back to your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. Yeah. You know, my great grandfather didn't find a job that he was passionate about. You know, <laughs> he, he he did it because he had to he, fight tooth and nail for an opportunity. Also, here's the yeah. deal: passion, happiness, excitement—they feel great. They're wonderful, but that's not the key to success in life. The key to success in life is meaning, purpose. Those will always serve you. You know, uh, they do uh, these these surveys of uh, of people who have children, and they compare them to people who don't have children. And it's so funny when these, uh, when when articles are written about this. But you could tell there's a media bias, uh, constantly trying to convince people to not have uh, children. Because you'll read the article titles, and they'll say things like, "People, you know, couples who don't have kids are more happy. People who don't have kids have more fun." And so, you, if you just read the, t the headline, you're like, "Wow, I'm not going to have any kids because people who don't have kids have less stress and they're more happy." Yes, that's true. But continue to read the study. People who have kids find more purpose and meaning in their life. Mm -hmm. Which one is more valuable? Ask any old person who's about to die or who's reaching the end of their life, and they'll tell you it's meaning and purpose. So passion, excitement, happiness. Those are all fleeting. Yeah. Those are they're great. Enjoy them. They're real parts of life. But that's not what life is all about. So although passion is a part of, of who you are and you should experience it, don't chase it and drive after it and make that your defining feeling because you'll be screwed, I promise you. You'll be fleeting. And I've worked with lots of people like this. I have worked with very talented people who were constantly chasing passion. And it, when they're young, it's okay. I want, I'm moving from this thing. I'm doing this thing. I'm passionate. I'm bored. Yeah. And now that they're in their 30s and 40s, they're, they're not successful. Mm -hmm. They're in debt. Not they're, happy. Not happy. They're always looking, looking for the next thing. Always looking for the next thing. So, well, you, you know, know what ends up happening is that you're something that you you're so passionate about. You end up working in that industry, and then you would find out there's so much yeah. more to it. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that that passion starts to to, yeah. to fade away, and then now you're stuck in this career that you Dude. you waited so long to to get into because you thought you had to be so passionate about it, and then that all changes. It's always greener somewhere else. Here's a great example. Talk to any successful couple that's been together for 40, 50, 60 years, right? Talk to them about passion. When you first meet someone, you fall in love with them. Yep. Passion dominates the relationship. It's just all over the place. But how do you build a long-lasting partnership with the person? Those feelings change and go away, and then you have this bond that is mm -hmm. different than passion, but way stronger and more powerful, and that's much more important. If you're always chasing passion, here's what will end up happening. You'll fall in love with someone. You become passionate. Passion starts to wane. Then you don't give the bonding a chance. You don't give the hard part, the part that's real important, a chance. You end up leaving them. You go to the next person you feel passionate about, and that's a it's a road to to failure. It's a road to uh, a poor outcome in life. So passion is good, but don't don't let that don't lean over on you. it. Absolutely. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Um, oftentimes, we check our DMs, so you can ask us questions too. You can find Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug, Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam, Mind Pump Adam. 
Number one, though, is to focus on recovery and healing. If you don't recover properly and get your body to heal properly, nothing we said will help. Mm -hmm. You'll be stuck on this hamster uh, wheel of continued pain and injury and not being able to get back to where you were before. But keep in mind, muscle memory.